All right, now this lesson is a bit more intense than most. So take your time and go through this slowly. And feel free to ask any questions if any part of this doesn't make sense to you. This is very important information and you need to master it. So let's take this one step at a time. In the previous lessons, we talked about something called the instruction pointer. So you know that your CPU keeps track of the address in memory of programming instructions being executed using the instruction pointer. Now everything in our last lesson focused on having a single list of instructions. What would happen if you had two lists of instructions instead of one. So here I want you to imagine that we have two different lists of, of instructions. This list has five instructions and this list has four instructions. First, notice that there is nothing preventing you from moving the pen at will between the two lists. You could do item one on the first list, followed by item two, followed by item three, and then you might decide to jump to the second list and do item number one, and then item number two, and so on. So it turns out that just like in this example, you can create as many programs as you want each program starting at its own unique address in memory and we call these smaller programs functions although as you will see they have other names as well now each function has its own unique address in memory where it begins and has a list of programming instructions to execute in an earlier lesson, I explained that part of the job of a programming language is to keep track of memory addresses for data. I pointed out that you can give plain English names to any data that you like, and the programming language does all of the work of tracking its value and its memory address so you don't have to. Well, we also said that programs and programming instructions are data just like everything else. Remember the programs are data too lesson. Therefore, would it not make sense that you can keep track of addresses in memory of functions the same as you can any other data by just stating plain English names? The answer is yes. Every programming language makes this possible. So I could, for example, choose to call one function business to do today. And then I could name a different function personal to do today. When I want a function to run, I can just call the function using the name that I gave it. The programming language understands that the name is actually corresponding to where in memory the program is actually located. The programming language takes care of all of the details about where it is in memory, how to handle the instruction pointer, and everything else. As a programmer, I don't have to worry about any of those details. Now every programming language does this differently. Some languages call these functions, some languages call them routines or methods, and there are other names as well, but the idea is the same. If it is a list of programming instructions meant to be executed and called by some plain English name, it is for all intents and purposes a function for the purposes of this course.